G'day guys, you are watching the Space Slugs. It's Tom, or the Harp Daddy, again here with another Brawl in the Cantina casual battle reports. Uh, this is where the Space Slugs and our Patreons or our Discord members test out upcoming or newly released characters and strike teams. If you enjoy what you're seeing here on the channel, chuck us a like and a subscribe. Uh, and if you'd like to be part of these videos in the future, consider joining our Patreon via clicking our link tree in the description below. Uh, it helps the channel immensely and thank you so much to our current patrons. Today, uh, Starstone, one of our Discord members, is helping the slugs continue our Ewok experimentation. And I also get the opportunity to put Vader and Asajj back on the table, uh, but this time deciding to try out super tactical droids alongside the pair of primaries. So let's jump over to the strike teams. So you can see here, Starstone is running a very similar Ewok team to last week's. However, he's uh, swapped the place of Paplu and Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, which I do think is wise because Obi-Wan Kenobi, of course, is not a rebel. He doesn't have the rebel tag, uh, so he wouldn't be benefiting from, uh, you know, things like Leia's expose. Uh, so essentially, we've got Leia, Paplu, and Lando with R2-D2 uh, to provide an incredibly quick little squad here uh, with Paplu and Lando doing a real decent amount of damage as well, plus some area control from Leia's uh, bomb uh, or explosive charge. Then we've got Low Grey as the other primary, who is an incredible enabler, which you guys will see uh, plenty of in this game, uh, and more area control with Obi-Wan Kenobi and the Ewok Trappers bringing their primitive artifice. Um, so relatively quick body bodies there as well, uh, and some decent damage too. Then we're up with my strike team, which sees the union of Asajj Ventress, whom I love, and Darth Vader, Jedi Hunter, uh, who I have to say I don't have much experience with. Um, I I think I'll I think this will be my third game with him, and I'm sure you guys know that I I much prefer the unarmored blue bladed version of of this character. Um, so I'd probably like to use Vader alongside Django um, for some diceless displacement redundancy, and also the Aft Troopers for access to expose, uh, and then also have Asajj with the Night Sisters. Uh, for expose as well um, but i've been really 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 enjoying the double super tactical droids lately so i thought i'd bring them alongside the b1 battle droids because i've never used them before uh, and see how they go Okay, so we both brought Sabotage Showdown today, so the priority role only mattered for what gets paired up against what. Um, Leia is decent uh, at ranged, um, and you know, she doesn't have a lot of shoves, so I thought maybe I could put the B1s up against her. Um, but mainly, I want Asajj up against Obi-1 Kenobi here as well, just because, you know, um, she's got a fantastic force push, which is a great mitigator to his mind trick. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I get that opportunity and I have to take it uh, regardless of what the terrain looks like, etc. And that is indeed what happens. Um, so yeah, Asajj up against Obi uh, and Vader up against Leia. That's essentially how I'm looking at it. So this is the terrain layout. Uh, we've both got two units contesting each objective, uh, but unfortunately my opponent draws the Ewok traps, the primitive artifice. So here it is, if you guys want to have a look at it. Uh, basically the only thing I care about is if my opponent rolls a crit, which I definitely don't want, uh, and he's chosen the Kalani and the Magna Guard uh, units to, or that, that objective essentially, to be the one that is targeted. Um, so the two damage I'm fine with, I really don't want the pin, uh, but I especially don't want to be pushed away. Um, so all of them are actually pretty bad for me uh, in all honesty but the the crit will essentially put me behind a turn in terms of scoring um, so yeah I mean that's essentially what you might want to plan for uh, and essentially what you don't want to happen to you as well so here it is and of course my opponent does roll the crit uh, which is yeah a pretty big blow really so both uh, Kalani and the Magna Guards here will take a pin uh, two damage and they'll also be pushed back away from the objective so Rough times. Um, I'm sure there's a way to mitigate that in deployment, uh, but I've, I've not really spent any time on it. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> that's a, a big blow to, to my early game plans. Um, my opponent then draws Logre, who is that enabler, of course. So essentially Leia can gain a hunker and dash, um, and then everyone else gets to dash. So that'll be Paplu and the Ewok Trappers will all get a dash as well. So that's a really strong ability. Uh, and essentially Logre has got some very... Um, uh, you know, uh, Separatist droid-esque abilities. So he, he gets to move people, he gets to give them shots or maybe recover conditions, etc. Um, so he can see Leia is doing her dash as well. Uh, Low Grey then just uses his um, uh, stealthy approach ability, which is a really nice uh, sort of defensive... Um, defensive maneuver-esque ability but it also gives you the opportunity to take a hunker or a focus um, so of course he's taken a focus here and just taken that objective uh, to claim three so my first pull of the game is kraken he decides
decides to use There Is No Escape on the Magna Guard. Uh, one clears the pin and then the other gets into scoring range, which is really good for me. He then takes a hunker and goes underneath the objective in the center there uh, for me to score three. So Starstone pulls the Shatterpoint card and picks Lando and R2-D2 to activate, which is, I think, um, a really great use of this unit. It keeps their order card in either the deck or in reserve, uh, and it means that they just can't be shot at, which is really, really fantastic. Um, so they're going to move up using Mingle and then make some ranged attacks into Kraken. I unfortunately roll too few dice here just because I've got a Kraken, uh, a Kraken, because <laughs> I've got a Hunker and I'm in cover, um, but it, yeah, it doesn't really make a huge difference. That's two successes and a damage, um, which gives them a shove. Uh, this is Lando's attack, of course, but it doesn't give Kraken a shove just because he's steadfast. Uh, I realize that I've made a mistake, but I still roll too few mini attack dice on the next one, um, but yeah, anyway, uh, basically nothing goes through there, so it's, uh, it's a bit of a wash, uh, but then the second action, of course, for these guys is going to be a climb, uh, and they will get on top of that objective make it really hard for me to get up there as well uh, and they can't be shot at so it's really strong uh, and then of course uh, Starstone will be scoring four so I pull Kalani uh, Kalani does what Kalani does best just dashing all of these units um, she's still pinned unfortunately uh, but I can do some hunkering and maybe some ranged attacks or something at Logre who is underneath the um, the little battlement there uh, and then I can use Tactical Network to, of course, uh, try and get one of these Magna Guards on the objective as well. So there you can see Kalani takes cover, uh, and then that puts her nicely within range 5 of Logre, who is underneath the objective you can see here. And Kalani just goes off, getting six successes through after Logre's block. So that is actually a full tree for her, which is fantastic. It is going to be a wounded Logre, which turns off uh, protective wards, which gives everyone within range four extra dice if Logre is not wounded. So that's really strong. I get a free tactical network, uh, and then I move a Magna Guard up just to so can score that objective, and I score three of my own. So Starstone here gets Lando and R2-D2, keeps them in reserve, which means that they still can't be shot at until, you know, Starstone wants me to be able to shoot at them which is really strong and draws Paplu. So Paplu can have a crack at these Magna Guard um, that are contesting now so he just doesn't move. He does a stealthy approach which is a really really good Ewok ability giving them a focus or a hunker um, and a dash so of course uh, Starstone chooses the focus here uh, and gets I think uh, three or four successes through because he's rolled that juicy juicy <laughs> one expertise uh, which ends up being five damage and a strain and a push onto my Magna Guard, which is really strong. I mean, a strained Magna Guard on seven health means that they can't really do anything. Um, so I'm get definitely gonna have to modify my game plan around that. So I do draw the Magna Guard, which is lucky. I can whack them straight into reserve, and then I pull the B1 Battle Droid. So this is good. I'm just gonna move them both into range of Paplu just to see if I can get some cheeky attacks through uh, or some damage through, but I'm really looking for that reposition on both of these guys, really. Um, so I do get it on the first one, which is nice. I think I get, you know, two or three successes. Uh, I get three, actually, because it means I can put an Expose on Paplu as well. Um, yeah, so I do the reposition back to hold that objective, and then the second one, uh, attacks at an exposed Paplu, which is nice. Um, getting rid of that single expertise is, is great. So I end up with three successes there. It uh, means I get to put a few more damage, but most importantly, I get the reposition, which I'm using to get up this ladder and secure that objective. So didn't win Paplu, but I got the objective back, which is great. Scoring three points, and then my opponent is gonna go with OB2. So Obi-2 is great. He chooses run. He's going to basically be able to climb up that ingress point there. Uh, and then his first action is going to be a climb. And then, of course, he's just going to smack into the B1 battle droids. They're, of course, going to get shoved off. There's not really anything that they can do. I do block two, though. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's not going to be enough to prevent any pushing shenanigans. Um, so they do get shoved off twice. They're still within range of the objective, though, for protection. Um, so it doesn't you know, do too much damage, but of course, uh, Starstone is going to take the objective back and score four. So I draw Asajj here, which is fantastic for me. She's exactly the piece that I want to use to control uh, Obi-2. Um, and I really need to make sure that I get this mind trick out of the equation. There's a few things that I want to achieve here. Uh, namely, I want to heal up the Magna Guard just to make sure that I uh, free up their activation. And I want to be able to attack into Paplu to get the wound, uh, which would not be hampered, of course, by mind trick. So essentially, I'm going to do a jump. Uh, that'll get me a better angle on Kenobi. Uh, I'll be underneath him, so I can essentially dictate the, you know, the direction of this of this jump uh, sorry this this push so he we see the push I'm just gonna make sure that he essentially gets pushed perpendicular to where he is now um, he gets a uh, removed out of range three which is super important uh, and then I'm actually gonna spend another 
force uh, to do another jump just to get range two of these Magna Guard so I can do some healing on them um, after I attack Paplu. So here's a here's a, an attack into Paplu. Um, he is exposed, which is nice. Uh, but I do get end up, I, I think I end up getting three crits through here, which is good because he's exposed. Uh, and then, yeah, that's essentially going to mean he gets wounded and the healing shenanigans will begin. So you can see that I, yeah, heal the first one off of the Magna Guard there. I then use the free jump from the combat tree to get up here. Uh, and because of Sith Assassin, I heal an additional three. So there's another three damage coming off the Magna Guard, uh, which is amazing. Um, I've, of course, scored a momentum. I will flip over into Jarkai just for some defensive shenanigans and then I'll also get uh, cover from the Magna Guard being in range too as well. So Leia is going to be Starstone's next card. Uh, she's going to use Infiltrate on herself just to get next to this Ingress Point, which is a really good little vantage. Uh, she can have a crack into the B1 Battle Droids, and that is exactly what she does. So she gets uh, a fair few successes there, thanks to her Expertise tree. So she ends up with three criticals through and a reposition due to her Expertise chart, which is really, really solid. Uh, so she ends up taking the top chart there, which will be five damage and an exposed down to four because of protection from the B1s. She'll use the position to place herself closer to the objective but of course outside of range two because then uh, Leia spends two force for explosive charges which will do two damage to everyone within range two of the active objective or actually of any objective which makes it incredibly powerful and then her last activation or action in her activation will be a move. Now of course Leia is an Ewok uh, so she will get the benefit of special ingredients regening a force thanks to low gray and that will mean the Ewoks score four plus a momentum. So really good activation there. There's not much I can do uh, on the bottom hand side here next to Vader. I mean, I can definitely deal with Leia, um, but I can't really clear that much uh, much space to, to, to get an influencing activation on Lando and R2-D2. So I end up pulling the Magna Guards here just to protect Asajj a little bit more. Now that they're healthy, I can make good use of Intercede. And I do decide to try and have a crack into Leia as well uh, next to... Um, next to, of course, uh, Vader there. So I get a full tree off these Magna Guards into Leia. Uh, Magna Guards doing what they do best, which is really, really nice. I, that just basically means I do, I think, five damage and a disarm. Sorry, six damage and a disarm. Uh, and I do push Leia uh, down um, next to Vader just to threaten the wound on him as well and just to give her some... Uh, sorry, make her spend some extra resources uh, getting into into the fight again. So, yep, nice little uh, Magna Guard activation. I will score uh, three again, so I, I take some objectives back. Um, but it's looking relatively likely that the uh, the old Ewoks will push me out of this struggle, unfortunately. So we have the Trappers being pulled as the last card in the order deck. Uh, this is just a stealthy approach being triggered and then a climb action. So you can just see that um, Starstone is just putting them up on top here with a climb. Uh, because of Intercede, both of these guys are going to have to have a crack into the Magna Guard, but essentially all they need is a wound. Um, so that's what they're fishing for here. So the first Magna Guard gets uh, three blocks. Uh, so that just basically means the two crits and a damage will go through, which is pretty good. Uh, it's not going to get the wound uh, straight away, but uh, it will mean that the second one has to have an attack. Uh, and yeah, I mean, they're going to get it no matter what, basically. They only need a few successes and maybe a uh, uh, an expertise roll. So this is the second one, uh, and they do get the wound, which will mean that the struggle has concluded. Uh, of course, that will also mean that uh, Stealthy Approach, sorry, Secret Ingredients gets triggered off of low grade because of the wound. Um, but uh, unfortunately for Starstone, it doesn't equate into a Force Regen. And instead, it just means that both of the attacking characters in the unit that did the wounding can do a dash. So they're just going to stay there, basically, um, to try and uh, maintain that objective uh, if it flips in the next uh, struggle. Um, uh, of course, I will get to choose. But yeah, there is the struggle concluded. And this is where we ended up in terms of the layout. Uh, so I thought that uh, Vader could basically hold the entire sort of bottom flank there by himself and I had a really good control amount of presence on the on the top there. So that's why I decided to, to go for here. And we do pull the Shatter Point. Now, of course, the, the Shatter Point trigger on this struggle is a free dash. And I decide to try and go for the one shot on Asajj. So I've got uh, essentially what I'm trying to go for here is, um, is getting as many objectives as possible. Um, I'm going to go for a two damage from Vader to roll three extra and then I'm also going to take a focus action to, to go hard here so I end up getting a full tree on Asajj which means I'll use the free force push on low gray um, from the active ability just to make sure that when he wakes up he's not just sitting on the objective and he does actually need to spend some actions on getting there or some 
you know, resources on getting there. Um, I do heal because I've wounded a unit. Uh, no one else is in healing range. Um, and then I essentially am going to do a jump um, to, to sit down on that objective. So a pretty good little activation here for, um, for a Sarge and a good start for myself. And then my opponent draws Lando and R2D to the last card in their order deck. So this is really good. It means that, you know, they'll be back in the order deck essentially, uh, which means that they won't be able to get shot at uh, for the next struggle uh, but I do think that uh, Starstone makes quite a blunder here as well so essentially he's going to use Mingle to get a little bit closer and use that ingress point and I think that's fine uh, essentially going to put uh, R2D2 in, in attack range to try and get a shove on uh, Asajj and, and take the objective back but this placement here you know he's, he's essentially unable to get shot at um, but he, he still can be meleeed and by putting him right there then Darth Vader is going to be able to get at him uh, using that ingress point right next to him next turn so we don't really do any damage to Asajj maybe one or two um, and I think I repost the Lando and R2-D2 unit as well yep so essentially I blocked it all I'm still in Jarkai um, so I, I do repost them they take two damage uh, and then we score two for Starstone so pretty good early lead for me uh, I'm then going to use Vader's Fury here um, you can see that this is my inexperience with Vader um, I'm using a dash instead of an advance I then use an advance to use this ingress point here and I just go bang into Lando and r2d2 so um i've started again this is the the inexperience i should have started on dark fury but i started on his more defensive side which means that i have to flip into the dark fury i still get the one shot but it means i won't have a, as good an expertise tree uh next you know uh, in, in, in sort of the, the follow-up turns here. So I get one shove and I'm just going to use my dash on the combat tree to come into the center to make him a little bit harder to displace. Uh, and that will essentially be a momentum and four for me. So looking like a, a good quick win for the Empire here. Or could you call them the Empire? I'm not entirely sure. The droids, the dark side, whatever it is. So um, my opponent pulls Leia. He whacks her in reserve and then we go with the wounded Paplu. So Paplu is going to come down here, use a stealth the approach he, he needs to essentially dash because he's still engaged with Asajj there uh, and he's just going to have a melee attack into Kalani so probably going to make mincemeat of the old Kalani here does roll far too many expertise though which always makes me smile um, so just one damage and two strikes go through so it's still fair enough I think he still gets five through and a strain yep so that's pretty nice uh, Kalani is still pinned of course as well which makes my life a little bit more difficult um, but yeah that will essentially be one and no matter what happens it's going to be my uh, struggle next turn so um, I'm gonna put Asajj into reserve she's essentially what I use for big swings and then I pull the B1s and the B1s are great I'm probably just gonna take some shots into you know Paplu and Leia here just to try and condition them out or something similar and just put bodies on those points for next struggle so a fantastic roll from the B1s into Paplu there um, they will get a free reposition here just to come down uh, and they'll also do a few damage as well and then I also use the next attack into Leia which is another colossal roll from the B1. So they actually do get the wound, importantly enough. And it's a, yeah, pretty good start to, or I guess a pretty good end to the struggle. So um, I, it means that, you know, um, Leia will have to spend a lot more force on her abilities, um, which is which is never a bad thing. And of course, I put both of the B1s on the center of the objective uh, with the next action. So this is how we end up. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Uh, we're contesting... Um, uh, B1s with Paplu, which is good. I've got Kraken underneath the priority objective there, and then Asajj is all by herself uh, claiming that objective. So my opponent ends up pulling uh, Leia. Uh, she ends up using Infiltrate on her to just come up um, uh, on, on, on that gantry using the ingress point, and then she'll have a crack into Vader just to see if she can, you know, get some conditions like a pin on him or something similar and he is in um his his dark rage side so his defense is not fantastic but it's a really good roll and a very poor roll from uh Leia as well so just one crit will go through which just results in two damage for vader um but it will be you know two points scored for um my opponent starstone um and we'll see how we respond so uh, i don't think i need to pull the asajj trigger yet um the magna guard are a good pull uh it just means that i can set up for a little play here here, which I'm quite happy with. So the Magna Guard are going to come down and take that point off of Paplu no matter what. Um, and then I'm just setting up for an Asajj play here with these Magna Guards. So essentially I want to stay within range 2 of Obi-Wan. 
threaten the mind trick um, because I really want to try and shove him out of combat. Um, but uh, more importantly, it's going to allow um, protection protocols to pull the Magna Guard onto Asajj's objectives whenever she moves off. So that's sort of the play that I'm trying to set up. Uh, the Magna Guard are going to have a crack into Paplu. Um, they'll get you know, a, a great role as usual uh, for Magna Guard. So I think I end up with three crits going through there, which is which is great. Uh, maybe even, maybe, I think actually that's a full tree. Yep, full tree. Um, I won't be able to do anything to uh, displace Plapu, so he's going to still stay on that objective. Uh, but I'll just tuck myself in nicely just to get as close to the point as possible. Uh, my opponent decides not to mind trick um, this next attack from the Magna Guard. Uh, so I end up getting two crits through, which is, you know, enough for a heal and a, or two shoves. Just going to shove them out of range um, just so that protection uh, protocols advance can be the full distance, which is nice. And I will score three. So, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about the start of this objective, um, start of the struggle, the final struggle. My opponent ends up drawing low gray, and this is, of course, the enabler. Um, so, yeah, repositioning Leia a little bit, giving her a hunker, which makes her nice and tanky. And then Paplu will uh, basically get to do some moves. And one of the uh, trappers will move down onto this objective because the other is pinned. And, of course, they are wounded as well. So no need to worry about them. So Logre is going to flip over into his Wisdom of the Woods combat stance and have a ranged attack into Asajj. Uh, he will only get one success through here. Uh, sorry, two successes through here. So it will be two damage, a shove, which is the most important thing, uh, and a strain on Asajj as well. So that is quite nice. It definitely limits her options a little bit. So the first thing that's going to happen here is, of course, the follow-up from the combat attack. And then the second action, as you can see here, will be a hunker. So yeah, Asajj. Sarge has taken three damage and a strain. So my opponent decides not to spend any force here on Elder's Command and just goes and scores three, which is pretty good. But in response, I decide to do a big Asajj play, which is essentially the thing that I've been setting up for for a while. So this is a basically, hopefully, going to be able to enable me to score four. But unfortunately, I blunder this super hard. So it is like 1 a.m. in the morning while we're playing here, and I don't know what happens. <laughs> I've done all the, the setup, uh, but I just don't get it right. So you'll see why in a minute. So I've done the move on Asajj, which means she takes strain damage, but importantly, it means that I get to move the Magda Guard onto the point and contest the objective. So essentially, the big play that I'm going for here is to flip Asajj into Makashi, get three successes, which will allow her to shove Law Grey twice, and that's relatively trivial with Asajj's exp expertise and, and, of course, Vader's identity, uh, and then force dump to jump within range three of Leia, and force push her off, which will allow Kraken to take the point off of her from underneath the building because she'll no longer be in contesting range. So I take two damage on Asajj from Vader to roll three extra attack dice, um, but unfortunately here, a little bit of a disaster strikes for me. So I still get a really great roll with five expertise, but my opponent also gets a fantastic roll and ends up with four expertise, which means low gray turns one of my critical results into a fail. And that essentially uh, results in me only getting two successes through here. So <laughs> if I had have thought this through a little bit more, uh, it would have been absolutely fine. I still could have jumped with the force to with within range three of Leia, spent two to force push her off of her point to result in the same Kraken scoring it. And then I could have spent another force to jump back onto Logre's point to outnumber him two to one uh, with the healthy Magna Guard there and score four for a massive swing. But I think by virtue of the fact that I didn't get enough results in my combat tree, um, I sort of just tricked myself into thinking that that one play was the only way to get the four points that I wanted and I don't know I just sort of completely blunder here <laughs> and um, this just comes back to bite me in so so many ways later on in this game so I just wanted to let you guys all know um, let this be a note to all aspiring Asajj players out there she is absolutely fantastic if you play her well but if you play her like a like an absolute potato like I do in this activation then yeah she she can feel pretty disappointing so here is the one shove that we end up getting on low gray from the combat tree and i will end up just following this up with an, a force push as well and again i don't know 
what happens here, but it is what it is. So we end up doing a force push. That still will, you know, turn off some things like protective wards and um, and all that kind of stuff in Elder's Command, uh, unless you spend some resources to get back into the fight. Um, but yeah, uh, then I spend a force to, to get onto that point and just to try and trigger some intercede. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a bit rough. Um, I, I could have scored four, as I said before, but I end up scoring three, which is fine. But um, four just, you know, puts so much pressure on, on your opponent and allows me to really sort of get a handle on the game so it is what it is um so my opponent uh, goes with the ewoks here um they're both going to do a move they basically don't want to be engaged with um the magna guard to prevent me from triggering intercede so that's essentially what we're seeing here and then we'll see uh two force being spent for a stealthy approach to make sure both of them uh not only get a focus but are also not engaged with the magna guard so they're both going to have a crack into Asage here um and yeah i mean they, they do pretty well she's now in in makashi which is definitely not her most tanky side um so yeah uh, they do get the wound there on the first one um, I missed the secret ingredients roll here, but it is the result that allows both of the wounding characters to do a dash, which means that the second one now can have a crack into the Magna Guard as well. So, yep, that's essentially what we're seeing here. The Magna Guard uh, do block three. Um, so, yeah, just one crit and I think uh, three successes or two successes go through. So, yeah, they do get a shove. Um, so the Magna Guard is now lo no longer contesting the point as well. So, yeah. That is that. Um, not really anything I can do there, uh, but you know I would have instead of scoring uh, three here, my opponent only would have scored two, uh, and then you know we we could have seen. I mean, you'll see how how much impact this has, and then I could have drawn a, a Vader here. <laughs> Vader comes in and of course gets the one shot on these uh, little Ewok troopers, um, so he takes two damage and, and rolls. That would have given me the point back, which would have been another momentum and another four, but. Uh, lo and behold it is what it is so just yeah just just try and slow down when you guys play make sure you're thinking all your interactions through uh, make sure you're thinking of all the plays and and when you're bringing a piece like a size just really i think i want the message of this game to be uh, just yeah just really take your time with her so my opponent draws the um the lando and r2 combo uh, both of them will have a shot into the Magna Guard, which uh, isn't allowed because R2-D2 is, of course, engaged with Darth Vader. But as I said, it's it's like 1.30 a.m. at this point. <laughs> We're both pretty fatigued. Um, but yeah, so both of these shots are going into the Magna Guard who, who take a few crits. Um, and I think... Uh, that is essentially, yeah, that's the, the order of it. So I think they, they end up getting put on nine health. Yeah, so one away from being wounded a second time. And then um, the R2-D2 and, uh, and and Lando just take the objective off of Darth Vader. Um, yeah, and then my opponent scores three again. So that is what happens. So the priority objective is Leia. I draw uh, crack, uh, sorry, Kalani. Kalani is pinned and strained. Um, I decide to put it into reserve for free and then crack and go. So I choose the B1 with um, there is no or do not let them escape just to get him a little bit closer uh, and this will allow me to essentially take the objective off of Leia um, with a tactical network and of course Kraken's move of his own so I'm going to have a shot first into Leia just to see if I can shove her off the point uh, I end up getting a three crits through so yeah that, that'll essentially get um, two shoves on her uh, but I only do one uh, yeah so that's right I do one pin and one shove just to control her a little bit more uh, I then um, move Kraken uh, just so he gets up on the point and just because you know the whole mantra of what I like to do is put as many bodies on points as possible from different units I still spend the one force uh, my last force in fact um, on tactical network just to make sure that this uh, B1 battle droid also comes up onto the point just to make sure that you know it's a lot more difficult for my opponent to take it off of me so that is that so i'll end up scoring three um and um yep yeah, we go back over to starstone so starting to get a little bit out of my control now my opponent does draw the ewok traps so if he targets the b1s and magna guard down there um i i'm and and he gets anything other than a fail then i'm in a real predicament but luckily he gets a fail which means that they only get pinned and no damage is done so the b1s and the magna guards get pinned and i'm very lucky there and then my opponent draws the shadow a point so that'll be used on obi one kenobi and he's got a pretty good way to score three here so he's essentially going to use run on himself he'll still be out of range but because logre is still alive sorry pup Lu is still alive he just gets to move onto the objective and have a crack into a one health magna guard so that's basically what we're going to do um and yeah same result 
I'm glad that it didn't happen with a primitive artifice <laughs> Ewok, but uh, yeah, this is essentially going to allow my opponent to score three again, and of course gain a momentum. So they will also follow up just to try and make it a little bit harder for shoves to happen, um, basically locking uh, Paplu in place as well. Uh, and yep, three and a momentum scored. Uh, secret ingredients will be rolled, but it was not a force regen. So there you go. So I'm going to have a bit of a think. Uh, the priority objective does move down to Paplu and OB2. Kraken's not really going to be able to do, sorry, Kalani's not really going to be able to do anything for me. So I know that the last card in my deck is Shatterpoint. So I'm just going to have a bit of a measure for Darth Vader and see what he can do. It looks like, you know, even though he's engaged, he can still use an advance and of course Vader's Fury to come down and chop up either Paplu or OB2. And that is exactly what I go for. So there's a force spent for Vader's Fury. Um, it's just going to give me a, a, a dash because I'm engaged and then I get to do a move, um, a, a full move. And because I've got two units engaged, uh, even though I get mind tricked, um, I still get to, to do another attack. So this is going to be into OB2, of course, because I won't be able to have a crack into... Um, into a Paplu because of mind trick uh, and I do get two shoves which means I will get to take the point back um, so yeah basically this is the first shove I'm just going to try and get myself as close to the point as possible and this is the second shove of course I'm not going to be able to follow up on that but um, yeah I do get the point back which is nice but yeah I'm starting to really fall behind here and, and you know my opponent's got the uh, the mind trick capacity as well um, coming back after I think the next card is the last one and he can refresh so there you go. So the priority is nice. Uh, he does end up pulling Obi-Wan Kenobi again. And basically, we're just going to rinse and repeat and start a little battle. So um, Obi-2 is going to have a crack into Vader um, and push him back off the point. And that's going to take the point back for my opponent as well. So it gets a couple shoves through there. Um, I don't. He doesn't decide to wound, of course, because he doesn't want to trigger um, Fury of the Sith Lord. Or the, sorry, the, the Sith Lord strikes back. Um, so yeah basically a little duel over that objective and I can try and solve this issue with Kalani because that's the last one that I've got um, and see if I can keep this train of three going but my opponent does of course have their mind trick back up online so that's basically problematic and I don't have any force left either for tactical network so I'm hoping for some good rolls here um, I think I end up uh, you know choosing Paplu as the initial target after the priority is rolled um, and of course uh, you know we, we we do get that mind tricked so I do go into Obi-Wan Kenobi and I've got good expertise and still six attack dice minus two so it's still a good shot um, but unfortunately yeah I, I just don't get the expertise that I need and I don't get the successes that I need um, so I end up only getting one crit through which is just a few damage and then the second action is going to have to be a, a take cover uh, which won't give me a hunker because I'll be engaged uh, and of course I'll take three damage from the strain as well and that is colossally bad uh, it's a disaster so yeah it's all stemming from that Asajj play as well guys so you can see how one little not a little mistake it was a it was a massive blunder but one blunder in this game can have you know far-reaching consequences and that's what, one of the reasons that I absolutely love this game so much and I think it's a really good resource to be able to see these games back on tape even if you <laughs> even if you uh do really badly so yeah anyway so my opponent um is gonna go with Paplu. he's gonna have a crack into Kraken just to try sorry into Kalani just to get the wound there just to get a momentum get some secret ingredients spice as well which is good and he does of course get the wound so Kalani was only on uh two damage left so he does get a force regen from secret ingredients and a momentum and my opponent is one point away from the w um, b1s aren't really going to solve any problems for me here so i end up putting them on the bottom and we're going to go hail mary with these magna guards so i'm just going to try and you know get this point back try and wound both obi-wan and Paplu if i can um uh, and you know basically that's that's essentially what we're going for here i'm going to take Vader damage on both of them um, just so they roll as many dice as possible the first one's going to have a crack into Paplu and, and does get the wound I will use a Magna Guard reposition off the combat tree to get a heal on um, the strain just so I don't have to have two conditions and then the second one is not going to be mind tricked by my opponent and it will be into Obi-Wan Kenobi and I get a full tree there as well so basically um, that's pretty good my Magna Guard will unfortunately have to leave the board but, you know, if my opponent gets a bad draw and potentially a bad priority roll, um, and, or maybe I, I roll well, then, you know, there's a, there's a chance. There is a chance. 
Um, so we both get a momentum. I need the priority objective to be on the B1 Kraken side and I need my opponent to draw something like Leia or something similar. But because I've got the force to refresh and, and reserve, it's going to be pretty difficult. There's Low Grey. Low Grey is a great draw for me. Like if he had kept that or had something in reserve, I would have been fine. Um, but, you know, he's, he's going to whack that in reserve. And of course, he unfortunately draws the Shatter Point. So that's essentially game over. Um, he's just going to use the, uh, the, the the Ewok Trappers there to, to spend two force to do a sorry it's a three force to do a stealthy approach they'll both hit the ingress point there oh, well one will one will be on the on the ground uh, one will go up the top and then they'll both advance uh, onto this objective to seal the win and what a great game so it's really cool to see the ewoks take their first win uh, on the channel and yeah i can't really wait to see what ends up in their in their other boxes uh it's it's really fun to have such unique factions coming out in this game i'd say like ewoks and dathomirians and, and naboo handmaidens and having them all perform really well on the board is is a massive bonus as well so that's incredibly exciting um so yeah as always i hope you guys enjoyed the video massive thanks to starstone for being in this game and, and helping us out um and if the rest of you liked what you saw uh, drop us a like and a subscribe uh, and if you're feeling like supporting the channel then have a think about joining our patreon it is a massive help here at the slugs and will allow us to consistently bring you guys uh, what we hope is the best shatterpoint content available so all the links to where you can support us or communicate with us and leave feedback etc uh, in the video's description by following our link tree i've been tom and i'll see you next time